The story begins with the Medub video in which a massive human bug is seen in the bushes. Students of a college in Kangwon are talking about the video. One of the students says it is cool to be a human with insect wings like one of those mutated superheroes in action movies. Suchin Jan grabs the phone and says it's freakish to me about pair of bug wings. Suddenly a girl hugs him and kisses him. He says to his fellows he is a popular guy in college with 5,000 Stargram followers. He enjoys his college life and never does anything to compromise it. Mihui calls Suchin and asks him for lunch. They all are going for lunch suddenly Suchin feels uncomfortable, says sorry to his fellows for not joining the lunch and walks away home. On the way, he feels him scraping the barrel for excuses now. He has a secret that he can never reveal to anyone. He reached home and take off his shirt. He has a pair of wings on his back. He remembers how it started with a single dragonfly. Back in junior high, he was spraying on dragonflies and they turned into dust and he inhaled the dust. He fainted and when he woke up he had wings on his back. He frightened. He decided to overcome his fear. Suchin is in college now and wants to change after the incident. He tucked his wings, styled his hair and clothes, and become friendly to everyone. He decided he can't let anybody find out about his truth, especially Mihui. The doorbell rings, and Mihui is at door they both shouted to see each other. He asks Mihui what she doing here. She tells him the boys want to drink at his place and they give his address. He tells Mihui to leave him but she denied it. Mihui insisted he goes outside with her. She recalls their memories and became sad. After this Suchin came outside and they go to a movie. In cinema, he has multiple thoughts about his secret. Suddenly lights off and a man comes to the room and tells everybody to leave. A monster enters the room and kills everyone. He pushes out Mihui from the window. Suchin is so much scared about his truth but he didn't care and jumped from the window to save Mihui. Everyone knows his secret and this is his desperate fight for survival. The crowd near the building captures Suchin flying when he saves Mihui. Monster gets angry when he sees him hovering and came to know that he is a dragonfly. He wants to kill him. Meanwhile, he takes Mihui to the nearest hospital as she bleeds. A mysterious girl came to the monster and warns him that they have to be invisible. After one month, students are still talking about that movie theater incident. Suchin thinks people don't think this kind of freak news seriously. But still, it's happening all over again. His childhood memories hit him. He was an orphan and have no friends. Then and now, it's the same story he didn't have the joys of life. He sees his Stargram account, he is no more a popular guy. He sees Mihui's DM and though she is always with her in any situation and became happy. He goes to the hospital to see her. When he meets her she starts shouting monster and unfollowing him. Suchin is so hurt. One month later, he is still alone and tries to kill himself. He jumps from the building but starts hovering and curse the wings. Suddenly a mysterious girl came and tells him there is a way to become a normal human being again. He shocked. The girl tells him to fulfill some of the requirements. She tells him about jungle juice and takes him to her college, Nest Campus. He is so shocked by seeing so many people like him. He meets there that mysterious man who kills people in the theater. Suchin is very surprised to see this place. Everyone there has been infected by jungle juice. While roaming the campus he met an old man who is eating insects. It's weird for him. He meets Dogon Ma, Nest University professor. Professor thanks Huijin Park for bringing him here. Professor shows him how he becomes a normal human being again. They start viewing the video clip of the graduation ceremony of the university. The final segment is the representing top graduate with the promise of Cinderella. In the video, a monster drinks something and turns into a normal human being. Suchin is so much shocked and asks the professor what was that thing. Professor tells him. They researched jungle juice and made a solution named Cinderella. He wants that solution but the professor tells him to enroll in university and graduate at the top of his department. He agrees and registers himself in Professor Doyon Ma's course. He finds Huijin as the class president of practical entomology. Professor Jun Jai comes to meet Professor Doyon Ma and asks about Suchin. Registration starts everyone disappears. Professor Jun Jai tells registration starts like this and everyone uses their tactic of survival because in the end only the strong will survive. Course registration begins. Suchin is so curious about what's happening. A little honeybee boy comes to him and helps him. He tells him here registration is a bit different from regular colleges. The professors hide somewhere in the mountains and they have to find them to register for their course. The professor hand out USB drives to the first 16 students who find them and plug them into laptops for registration. Both wish the best of luck to each other and are on the way to finding their professors. Suchin starts flying and quickly he finds flags on the mountain. Meanwhile, everyone is fighting with each other for USB drives. He ignores them and flies to find Professor Doyon. Finally, he finds him. 
professor appreciates his strategy of a quick flight and gives him the last USB drive. He tells him to return to the lab and plug it into the laptop and warns him not to lose it. Suchin is so much happy as he is one step closer to becoming a normal human being. Professor Doyon sends the message that everyone who gets the USB drive is now the target of everyone. Everybody gangs up on Suchin and wants his USB drive. He starts running to save himself. Suddenly, a little honeybee boy comes and saves him from other students. Suchin thanks him but he betrays him and stole his USB drive. He fights back to get his drive back. Students with USB drives are done with the registration. On the other hand, Suchin fights for his USB. He punches the little honeybee boy harder he fainted and throws his USB. He is trying very hard for his drive. Suddenly, a girl comes and takes his drive. He is confused about whether he should save the little boy or run after the girl for his USB. But still, after all this, he didn't leave the boy to die. That's inhumane. He is screwed after losing his USB and faints. Suddenly Professor Jun Jai woke him up, giving him a piece of paper, and says him don't forget to recycle it. Suchin is so much sad as everything seems to be ending. He has multiple thoughts in his mind and starts to curse him. He is getting angry and can't believe this situation Professor Jun Jai tells him to take care of this paper when his own life is screwed. Then suddenly he sees there is the USB in this paper folding. Professor Jun Jai reminds him there are just 5 minutes more for registration. Hurry up. Suchin starts flying faster. Some students in the jungle tried to stop him from registering. Practical entomology freshman students, named Dowichin and Hyaseong Cha, save Suchin from the student as Professor Doyon already texts them to save him. Finally, Suchin reaches at a time and registers himself. As soon as he finishes registration, he receives a notification of class orientation immediately. The day isn't over yet for him. Nest University guards throw him out as he has no student ID. At the same time, Huijin comes with Suchin's student ID. They both walk towards the lecture hall. Everyone in class recognizes Suchin as the dragonfly guy from that movie theater incident. Hyaseong teases him for what he had done a month ago. He tells him it was very hard for him and Huijin to delete all the evidence. Huijin stops him and tells Suchin don't mind him. She cheers him as he did great. One of the class fellows from the last bench comes and starts fighting with Hyaseong. He and his group intimidate and threaten everyone as he wants to be a valedictorian. He snatches their student IDs so none of them will be able to attend the class. Suchin stops him but one of the group fellows hit him with a bat. After some time, he and Hyaseong are in Nest University's healthcare center. Huijin tells him she is going to get his replacement ID so he takes some rest. On the other hand, Huijin asks the group to give back the IDs. They start fighting with her and want to kill her. But at the last moment, Suchin saves her. A fight between Suchin and the leader of a group of monsters starts. Huijin stops him from the fight in a lake as the opponent is muted with aquatic insects and he will drag him to the water and finish him off. The opponent guy teases him with student IDs. She tells him they only want to fight with her because she was top of the class last year. She says to him, this is her mess and you guys got dragged into it, so leave her. But Suchin refuses to leave her alone. Meanwhile, Hyaseong also joins them. They again start the fight and win it by taking back all the students' IDs from the boys. They back to the lecture hall but orientation is already ended. They return all the IDs to their classmates and decide to hide them as they take back their IDs. Suchin goes to his room. He is so happy when he comes to know that Hyaseong is his roommate. Meanwhile, somewhere in the mountains, Gay and Sin is talking with the defeated boy about the professor's top student. She is angry at the boy for losing a fight and not killing Huijin. She kills him. The next day, Suchin was curious about his first class. Professor Jun Jai tells them there is a small test conducted and its marks count in the final grade. Now everyone is in the open training grounds of the university. Suddenly Suchin is so shocked that everyone is running. Huijin tells him it's practical combat for insects which is one of the required courses for their majors. It teaches them how to fight using their insect abilities. It's Professor Jun's subject. Professor Jun Jai tells the first test is a hide and seek game. Everyone should save himself to pass this subject. The one caught will fail the course. Test begins. They all start running. Meanwhile, the mysterious girl comes to the campus's underground isolated sector and kills the guards to free her boss. A little honeybee boy comes to help her access the room with the help of Professor Pass. She opens the door and frees the monster. The monster eats little honeybee boy. On the other hand, Suchin with Huijin and Hyaseong running for an hour, they are tired. Hyaseong tells Professor caught most of the others while they were running away. They all fail the test. Hyaseong tells them they have to keep quiet as the professor is here. 
Fiona and the other girl fall while running. The professor is going to kill them but in time Suchin comes and stops him. Professor gets angry. He and Suchin make a deal if he hit him for an hour he will not fail anyone. But if he fails to hit him, all of them will be expelled. Suchin thinks it's very easy for him to hit once. He is trying hard but he can't touch Professor Jun Jai. Professor sees he is using his all abilities even though he doesn't know about it. He thinks Professor is using his abilities. He tells him he is also an insect human but he can't use his abilities at this age due to some side effects. He also tells him he is repulsive and this thing limits his abilities. So he needs to know his abilities to wield them. Before all this Suchin has to accept the fact that he is an insect. He hits his memories and asks him how he can accept that the fact he becomes a monster. Suddenly Gaian starts clapping by saying the professor has always a certain flair. Except for Suchin, everyone is so shocked to see her. She kicks Hyona. Hyaseong gets angry but the Gaian poisoned him. He fainted now. Suchin is so much curious about what's happening here. He feels all the things are the same like with the movie theater attack. Meanwhile, the monster comes and injures Professor Jun Jai. Suchin feels the same sense of helplessness. They take Hyaseong and left. Huijin wants to stop them but Professor stops her because they are dangerous. He tells her the student can't fight without university permission. But Suchin didn't agree and fly to take back Hyaseong. Suchin starts a fight with the monster but he can't defeat him as he has a solid skeleton and injured himself. The mysterious girl tells the monster to kill them as they have to go before nest pets find them. Meanwhile, Hyaseong dreams that someone is calling his name and waking him up. He opens his eyes but he can't move his body. He sees Suchin fighting with the girl and the monster but he can't fight anymore as they both are very strong. They are going to kill him. Hyaseong gathers all his strength and saves him. He grabs him and starts flying. They get away so fast. The girl tells the monster it's a shame but they should move on. Monster tells her their smell is still lingering nearby. He can catch them. Hyaseong scolds Suchin that he shouldn't do this. He tells him this is the lesson in today's class. When they can't beat their opponent, they have to run. He tells Suchin that's why they catch him as he is a monster and killed many people. They have the plan to catch him again. Monster smells they are near to him. Suddenly Suchin comes from behind and ties the mysterious girl in twigs. He punches the monster and tells Hyaseong to take something that will cut his hard skeleton. Hyaseong takes the professor's chainsaw. Suchin takes it and is about to chop the monster. Suchin chops the monster one arm with a chainsaw. He and Hyaseong are happy that their plan works. Monster gets angry and yells how they dare to hunt him down. Suddenly chainsaw stops working. The monster takes it away and smashes it. Now they both start fighting with the monster at the same time but they can't beat him. The monster is about to kill Suchin, but suddenly, Professor Jun Jai comes and rescues him. The professor heals as he receives the treatment service from the nest. He tells them he was worried about them but they handle the monster very well. Professor uses his insect abilities and punches the monster. Suchin sees there is smoke coming from Professor's Jun Jai arm. Professor tells him it's the true power and effect of jungle juice. He warns him he can lose his powers if he ruins his abilities. The only way he can prevent this is to truly master his power as soon as he can. After some time, they return to the campus safely. Suchin and Haesiong are in the healthcare center. They are talking about the Gaian where she will be now. In the night, Haesiong again steps towards the jungle. Gaian caught him and manipulate him but suddenly, Professor Jun Jai comes and rescued him from her. Suchin follows Hyaseong into the jungle and finds there he is with Professor Jun Jai. He sees there is the Gaeon. He sees the professor talking with her about the past as they both know each other. She was a student of the nest. Professor gets angry at her nonsense and punches her. Suddenly, Professor Doyon Ma comes and stops them. Professor Jun Jai tells him that she is working for someone. Professor Doyun tells him that it would be wiser to let her go and track her down to find the real culprit. She says she will back off now and comes again and then kill every last one of them. Then suddenly he sees Suchin comes with the Hyaseong. They all go back to the campus. On the way, Professor Jun says to him that he didn't tell anybody what happened there and kept it secret. He agrees on one condition that he will teach him how to master his complex as he wants to be stronger. A few days later, everyone is eating in a cafeteria, and Hujin points out a girl named Doa. She helps out in the research by going to the labs instead of class and practicing on various tests. Group assignments start today. Suchin, Hyaseong, Hujin, and Doa are in the same group. They are going to complete their assignment. After a few days, the teacher's assistant comes to Professor Jun Jai's room and tells him that Grupa is working on an assignment but it's an emergency and one of them dies. In the lecture hall, Professor Jun Jai tells everyone about the assignment. 
The assignment is they have to find the spray bottles which are the source of the Cinderella solution. They all have to find them in the province. If the group finds bottles, they will get an A plus grade. They start to find the bottles. Hyasyong and Doa team up and search for their own, and Suchin and Hyujin pair up so it will help them to cover more ground. He tells Hyujin they all will get a plus because he had a bottle in their apartment. They both go there but someone already broke into his apartment and stole the bottle. He becomes very sad. She tells him it's fine and let's start looking around the city. They searched online and in stores but they didn't find a single bottle. They were tired. He wants to be normal again. She asks him if it is for that girl or if she is her girlfriend. Suchin starts laughing. And then he says she is right he wants her again and wants to be normal again. Then he thanks her. Hyujin's phone rings. She picks up. Hyaseong is so happy as he finds the company that makes jungle juice. He gets there a lot of bottles. He sends the location. They go to that location. That place is weird. They think it's a trap. But they go into the building, and he finds bottles. Suddenly someone attacks the Hyujin. She is injured. Suchin is always alone. He lost his parents when he was born then his grandmother died. He thought he would be used to saying goodbye but he can't. He can't say goodbye to Hyujin. He starts fighting with the tawny earwig monster. He tries to punch him hard but fails to defeat him as he has a hard skeleton. The monster tells him he is so powerful because he eats another insect human. It feels like a treat. Did he ever eat them? He tells him he is waiting for prey here and he gets them as a treat. Suchin gets angry and again starts the fight. He fights with him for some time but the monster knocks him down over and over again. But he doesn't lose hope and again tries to kill him with tricks but fails. The monster is going to kill him suddenly Huijin comes and beats the monster. She uses her complex and punches him with full power. A flashback of Huijin's life comes. She is poor and lives in a dark and small basement. She is just 17 and a student in high school. Her class fellow captures her and mocks her for her poverty. Suddenly, her brother, Jiangjin Park comes and kicks the body that captures her. She is happy as her brother is always on her side. She comes home and sees her brother is killing the bugs. But they run out of bug spray. Her brother suggests her let's buy that jungle juice stuff as people give good reviews and it kills all kinds of bugs. Her brother takes care in all manners. He wants that she can go to college. But her brother died due to exhaustion and left her alone. She feels poverty takes her brother, the only ray of light in her life. Her class fellows see her crying and want to take revenge for their insults. They throw a lot of cockroaches in her basement. She uses bug spray to kill them and how an insect human becomes. Such an asks Huijin about her wound. She replies she is okay. She is agile and recovers herself. Monster teases her on poverty. They both start to fight again. But at this time Monster kills her with full strength. Suchin is numb by seeing this as he lost her. He gets angry. Suchin stands up. His wings lighten up as it is part of his complex. Monster is shocked because he never eats anybody. He thinks there are other ways to get evolve and be stronger without feeding. He is happy that now he gets more nutrients by eating him. Suchin is so much stronger now after unconsciously using his abilities. He attacks the monster and almost knocks him out. Monster gets frightened by the power of Suchin. He again hit him and cuts his arm into pieces. Meanwhile, a flashback starts in which Professor Jun Jai teaches him physical training and defense mechanism. He is telling him that defense mechanisms can break that equilibrium and tap into their instincts which means they can exert even greater power by utilizing these senses. In this state, he becomes stronger. Now Monster curses himself for choosing the wrong prey. He is begging for his life. Such and cut him into pieces and kill him. After killing the monster, he faints. Suddenly a mysterious man comes. He finds Suchin as interesting as Gay and Sin. He wants to keep Suchin for himself, not for the nest. But he leaves him as the nest pests are tracking the signals. The pests come to the building. They see Suchin is coming with Huijin and asking for help as she is not breathing. At the nest campus entrance, Suchin holds Huijin in his arm. Professor Jun Jai comes there and asks what happened there. He starts scolding him. Suddenly, Professor Han Yong Yu comes and asks Professor to don't harsh with him and mind his temper. She comes to examine Huijin. She says Suchin to put her down. Suddenly Professor Yu's hands start glowing. He asks her what she is doing. Professor's assistant tells him she possesses a rare complex. She tells that Professor Yu has healing power. He asks her if it means she can bring Huijin back to life. Professor Yu tells him she can't take her back as her complex allows her to heal wounds. She says sorry to him that Huijin is already dead. She says medical staff to carry her body. Suchin starts crying and hugs her. Suddenly, he feels that she is breathing. Huijin is a cockroach human she shed her old damaged parts and grows into adult form. The light of her return. 
He is so glad that she is okay and hugs her tightly. In Nest Hospital, Hyeseong and Doa come to Suchin and tell him he and Hyujin enter the wrong warehouse. They were stuck in the warehouse. He tells him a boy with lavender color hair tells them about the warehouse. Meanwhile, the lavender hair boy named Breeder comes into the lab and tells the lab assistant he sees a stronger boy than everyone. He tells his spy is in the Nest school. It's time to have little fun. Class starts. Professor Jun Jai tells the students none of them managed to find a single bottle of jungle juice. He tells the students the purpose of the assignment was to realize just how difficult it is to find. Nest is currently facing great difficulties in acquiring more jungle juice. He tells it's all because there is another force of insect humans out to collect jungle juice for themselves. They have been attacking random people with the spray and turning them into insect humans without their knowledge. They are illegally breeding dangerous alien species and threatening the community. He says from this moment on, they will be given assignments focused on real combat. He tells them they all know what happened in the last assignment. They can get critical injuries even deaf. He tells them they will get grades which means high risks equal high returns. He tells students if they want to drop this subject they can, but everyone wants to stay. He says that's all for today. In the evening student orientation at Nest starts. Everyone is enjoying and eating. Doa teases Hyaseong. Suddenly a boy named Junhyung Lee comes to Doa and offers her a drink and takes her out of the room. Suchin notices something bad about the boy. Junhyung tied her and misbehave with her as she is unconscious. But on the time Suchin comes and stops him, a breeder sends someone to snag Doa from Nest as she is a specimen that he has been raising for a long time. Meanwhile, Suchin asks Junhyung what he were doing with her. Is he her boyfriend? Junhyung stops him. They both stats fighting. Junhyung uses his feathers with spikes as his complex to defeat him. He says to him, Doa will come with him because Nest is not a place for her. Once they leave, she will never come back. Suchin tries to stop him but fails because he is more powerful than him as he can shoot his hair too. On the other hand, everyone is enjoying the orientation party. Huijin thinks about Suchin and wants to ask him what happened that day. Hyaseong comes and says her, he didn't see Doa for one hour. He can't seem to find her, then a random girl sitting near tells them a boy takes her outside. Meanwhile, Suchin and Junhyung are still fighting. He can't defeat him. Junhyung injects him with poison. Suchin fainted. After some time he opens his eyes in a dark room. On her left side, a girl is sleeping. She is Doa. Both wake up. Suchin is worried because they broke their curfew and also missed their class. He reproaches Junhyung. Doa disagrees with Suchin. After some time, a small baby girl named Yerim comes and tells them it's lunchtime. He asks her where he brought them. Doa tells him it's an angel orphanage where she grows. Kids are asking a question to her about the tale. She tells them it's a toy and runs away. An old lady, the director of Angel Orphanage, comes and asks Suchin about sleep. She washed his clothes. She tells him that Junhyung brought him and Doa here last night. She also tells him that Junyoung and Doa grew up at this orphanage so that's why she didn't turn him away. She asks about Doa's life nowadays, as she was shocked when she showed her strange tale. Meanwhile, Doa recalls her memories and remembers how her father beat her. The old lady says to him he needs to get back to the campus. Suddenly Yerim comes and says Suchin to play with her. They both start drawing. After some time a caretaker comes and takes Yerim to her new home. She gives her drawing book to him. The old lady and caretaker are in the basement and start their experiment to convert Yerim into a human insect. On his way to campus, Suchin notices something weird in Yerim's drawing book. He comes back to the orphanage and goes to the basement. When he reaches there he saw an old lady is going to start some experiments. He stops her. He gets angry for ruining the lives of innocent children. A fight starts between him and an old lady. He came to know that she is also an insect human. Suddenly many insect humans are coming. They all start sucking Suchin's blood. Meanwhile, Doa is sitting in the room. Junhyung comes with some stuff. Doa tells him that there are some weird vibrations she feels. He tells her there is a lab in the basement that turns those kids into insect humans. She's shocked. He tells her if she remembers what they are like in their childhood. She was too fragile and at that time the only way to help her is to turn her into an insect human. He tells her that she looks stronger, so it is also best for these poor children to survive in this world. He says she should join him in this mission as he serves a person who can make that world a reality. Just forget about Nest. She is shocked after hearing this and punches him. Suchin is fighting for his life as well as for Yerim's life. The old monster lady and her group gang up and starts attacking at the same time. They all are so quick, but he is quicker than all and defeats them. Meanwhile, Doa and Junhyung are also fighting with each other. She refuses to be a part of his plan. He uses his defense mechanism to defeat her but fails as she had a hard skeleton. She beats him very well. 
While they both fighting, a lab assistant runs away with Yerim on the bus. Doa started running after them. She picks up the bus and hit it hard. She says if the kid is not on the bus she will crush her in the bus. Again Junhyung comes and starts a fight with her. She again defeats him. He again tells her it's the best thing for orphanage kids to have this power than to have nothing. It's a harsh reality. He shows his fangs to her for the first time and bites her with them. He poisoned her enough to make her unconscious. Suddenly Suchin comes. Junhyung tells him he didn't expect that he can kill them all but they both know very well how this fight will end. He tells him he even can't touch him due to his thirsty stinger. Suchin and Junhyung start the fight. Junhyung challenges him that he can never beat him, but he makes his way and attacks him with full power as he gets goggles from the bus. They work like shield his eyes from all the wind and dust and protect his eyes from burning. Nothing holding back him now. Suchin stabbed him. Junhyung uses his fangs to poison him but from a minor distance. Suchin saves himself. He thinks due to these fangs he knocks him and Doa out. Junhyung tells him don't get in his way as he has a mission to complete. He says to him that he didn't have any idea about how miserable someone's life is. In his childhood, it was hard for her mother to make ends meet. Some goons kill his mother for money. He couldn't save her. If I have powers at that time he can save her mother. That's the truth, life is a tragedy without any power. So now he wants to help all those children by converting them into insect humans. Junhyung uses his stingers to kill them. Suchin runs and covers Doa. He tells him Doa develops a tolerance to his stingers. Those stingers will kill him, not her and that end is here and now. Suchin shouted and says that this thing can't make kids happy. He is the one who put them in danger. Yerim comes and covers Doa as a shield. Suchin gathers his power and strategy and takes his aim. Suchin defeats Junhil. He comes to Yerim and asks her if is she okay. She asks him about the wound on his back. He replies he is okay. She thanks him for saving her life. He says to Yerim, he will go to the nest and tell them all about what happened, and they will help her somehow. Suddenly he realizes Doa is not here. He is in shock that she is gone. He feels someone is behind him. He turns his back but it vanishes. He just listens to the voice. Junhyung tells him that he knows the voice. It's the breeder's transporter. Suddenly they both see her. She tells Junhyung that the breeder knows that he will fail in convincing them so that is why he sent her to bring Doa back. He can tame her through feed training. Junhyung says to her, he doesn't fail yet, he will convince her to join them. So just put her down and gives her back to him but she ditches him. He becomes sad as he lost her. Both Suchin and Junhyung team up to find Doa. Meanwhile, she is tied with ropes. Breeder tells her he just wants her to be part of his time. She refuses. Breeder then offers her a meal made of insect human meat. The gay in force fully tries to eat her to make her a monster. As she knows once she eats it, she will addicted to this thing. Suchin and Junhyung reach at the time and save her. He sees Gae and Sin and Lavender Hair Boy is here. He is in shock. Junhyung tells Suchin. Doa gets stung in her neck and they are controlling her and turning her into his slave through Gae and Sin's abilities. Junhyung gets angry with the breeder and reminds him as he promises not to harm any orphanage people. Breeder smile and says to him, before starting a fight he should watch the video. In the video, small kids are getting feed training. He says to him he can quickly foster them into extraordinary hunting dogs. Junhyung gets angry and hit him with full force, but suddenly Doa comes in his way as she is controlled by Gaia. She broke his fangs. Doa is getting strong due to the combination of her complex and Gaian's complex. Suchin helps him to stop Doa, but Breeder tangles him into a spider web. Somehow he manages himself and attacks the Breeder with full power. Breeder can't control him as he is so fast in attacking. He turns on the sprinklers. Suchin can't fly as water is weighing down his wings. Breeder blocks his breathing by making water bubble around his face. He faints. Meanwhile, Huijin meets Yerim. Doa consecutively attacks Junhyong. He can't defend himself anymore. Gaian is so much happy as she is marvelously using all her abilities. She says to Junhyung that he should give up as he can't save her anymore. Once she begins to feed she will lose her humanity. In the end, it doesn't matter at all. Breeder tells him he will create a new world in which only the truly capable specimen will remain. So they don't need to save humanity as there will be no humans in the future. Gaian tells Doa she should eat meat now. Junhyung becomes very sad and reminds his older days with Doa and how they became friends. He even doesn't move but he tries his last move to stop Doa from feeding with his stinger. But Gaian stops his aim. Suddenly, Suchin comes and clutches the meat piece. Suchin flies higher from where Breeder can't catch him. Breeder tells him he is not a master in his abilities and can't defeat him. Meanwhile, coming their way to Doa, Junhyung teaches him an attacking trick. He reminds him, Suchin acts upon his advice and uses his all body as a bullet for the attack. Suchin knows it's too risky and he has to knock Breeder down in one shot. Somehow he gets success in this but after some time, 
Breeder comes with more power and straightens him in a fishbowl. Suchin gets panicked as there is no escape from the fishbowl. He is now a prisoner in the palm of a breeder. Breeder tells him that he will be going to suffocate and pass out. And when you opened your eyes you and Doa will complete their training session. Suchin starts yelling as he didn't want to become a monster. Suddenly Huijin comes and saves him. Suchin shocked. Huijin tells him that nest agents begin the search as soon as she told the professor you two were missing. A few hours before the nest agent is behind Gaian. But suddenly she disappears. Agent report to the school as he lost her. But luckily, the agent saw you. A little girl with your jacket told me everything. Now she is safe. Suddenly Doa attacks them. Suchin tells Huijin that they are controlling her with some kind of venom. A fight starts between Doa and Huijin. While on the other hand, Breeder again ties him to his web. Instantly Hyasyong and Hyona come to defend his friends. Gaian Sin is going to kill them all but on time Professor Jun Jai comes. Gaian doesn't expect Professor Jun Jai here. Professor Jai tells her that he comes here to end all this as she is meddling with the lives of his students. They both start the fight. Breeder tells Gaian that's enough for today. They have to go back. Breeder's transporter comes and escorts Gaian. Breeder tells the professor it ends here for today as he sent Gaian away. Now he can take the orphan and jungle juice with him. Professor comes to know that he is the leader of the hidden forces. Now he can track him down. Professor with his complex attack on him. There is so much heat spread all around. Suddenly Breeder turns very huge like a giant centipede. He says he planned to eat but he can wait for a little until next time as he has more things to take care of. Then he dugs a tunnel and escapes. After that everyone returns safely to nest. According to the lab test, Doa is recovering quickly. Yerim and the other students are going to another center. The board of directors at Nest arranges it all. Suchin and Junhyong are in the hospital. Hyasyong comes and starts yelling at Junhyong. Doa is telling Huijin that she has a funny story. When she got drunk at orientation and fall asleep, the next morning she woke up with Suchin Jack. She starts smiling. Huijin becomes sad and left the room. After some time she comes to Suchin's room and asks him did he slept with Doa. He gets scared and desperately explains the situation to her. He thanks her for always helping him out. The next day, Professor Ma plans a meeting with Professor Jun Jai and Professor Han Yong Yu on the behalf of the dean. He tells them Nest will actively pursue Breeder and his organization and prepare a full-scale war. He tells them he gets some information about them from Jun Hyung during the investigation. He shows the video to them. In the video, he tells the investigators Breeder takes all his prepared insect humans into the laboratory. Professor Ma says Professor Jun Jai to make a group of students that investigate the location of the laboratory on Black Island. On the other hand, Huijin and Suchin are eating in the restaurant. He asks him where Hyasyeong go. He tells her he went to visit his parents. Suddenly, Hyona and Don come there and make fun of them, as they both think they are dating. Don tells them, the labs are open and they are going to apply for some instruments that can make them stronger. They come into the lab and register. Suchin asks the lab assistant if can she make special glasses for him. In the pet shop staff house, Gayan is angry at Breeder for not letting her fight with Professor Jun Jai. She warns him. Breeder calms her and makes a cup of tea for her. He thinks she wants to kill Professor and is more curious about what happened to her five years before. Breeder and his transporter tell Gayan they will help her with anything. Meanwhile, Professor Jun Jai tells the class there is a laboratory in Black Island named Pet Shop, where the breeder puts the insect humans, so selected students will be disguised as tourists to locate their hideout. For this purpose, students will be selected via a group tournament, as it is dangerous enemy territory. The winning group gets a grade in his finals. After hearing this everyone gets excited. Suchin wants to win this group tournament with Huijin. Professor Jun tells them there are rules to playing this tournament, and they have to follow them strictly. They are all divided into four teams and each team has four members. The first match is between teams A and B they have to put their flags and their mission will be to take off the flag of other teams. In team A, Suchin and Hyujin will help take the flag of the opponent team, and Doa and Hyasyong will protect their flag. They start the fight with Hyona and Don. Don is so much stronger and attacks Suchin and Hyujin very quickly. He is so surprised by seeing her skills. Huijin tells him she's the spiny orb weaver spider. They have sticky bolas and swing them like a mace to capture their prey. But they have weak bodies. She wraps up a stray jacket to her. Dawn can't rip up easily. Hyona comes and uses her silk thread and ties her with the thread. Dawn tells Hyona if they handcuff one of them, then they will receive their base location. Suddenly, Huijin uses her weapon which looks like a destructive spike on the roach's legs. With the help of her weapon, she breaks the Dawn Iron Mace. Suchin uses his complex to defeat the Dawn and handcuff her. 
after this Group B base reveals. Meanwhile, in the class, Professor analyzed their skills via video. Kiona gets scared and runs away, but she slipped and fell from the mountain top. Huijin saves her, but she takes advantage of her helping nature and handcuffs her. Now, Team A's location is revealed. Now it's time to pick the opponent team's flag. Such an phone rings, and he picks up. Hyaseong tells him that Team B comes to their location and he can't save their flag anymore. He tells him he thinks they lose. Suddenly Such an sees the box and tells him, no they didn't lose it yet. Professor is noticing everything from the classroom. Such an wants to open the box but Huijin stops him. She tells him that it's not easy to handle it and saves it for future use. She is eliminated so she is going back to campus. Rest will continue the game. On the other side, Doa comes on time and saves their flag. A fight starts between Doa and the opponent team member named Jiwen Yong. He has a rhinoceros beetle complex. The other member of the opponent team names Rita H. Wang comes for a fight. She starts throwing her scales which causes an allergic reaction to the skin. But her scales are not working as she has a hard skeleton. Jiwen is trying to crush her. She starts using her complex and beat him with force. She again hit him but Rita comes and saves him by using her defense mechanism. Meanwhile, Hyona runs toward her base to defend it. But the game's turn and Suchin got the flag of the opponent team. Tima wins. In class, everyone starts talking about Group A's win. Hyaseong feels sad as he thinks he didn't contribute that much to the win. On the other side Group D wins the match. He tells him that Group D is marvelous even though they send a girl to the emergency room. A member of Group D named Chang Hun Yu comes and starts talking with Group A he triggers Hyaseong, as he knows his weak point. The final tournament starts between Groups A and D. Group D's member Hana Sion uses her complex on Group A's before the match. She hypnotized the girls with her complex as it only works on girls. Suchin is surprised and sad at the same time, as half of the team has gone as soon as they begin. They tie the girls with the flag. He says to Haya Sion that he should go for a fight, but he doesn't agree and left to find Team D as he wants to prove himself stronger because he didn't do anything for his group in the last round. Suddenly, a member of Group D names Majin Gu comes and starts fighting with Hyaseol. He beats and handcuffs him. Majin eliminated. Group D's base is revealed. He goes to the base of Group D there is nothing but weeds. He gets shocked. Suddenly, the earth explodes and he falls. Chang Hun pulls him. He is so much shocked at how they did this. Yunji Jiang, another member of Group D comes. They all start fighting. He can't defeat them. Suddenly, blood began to flow from his eyes. He can't see anything. Group D did the same thing earlier with the girl. Professor warns him not to cause serious injuries. They defeated Hyaseong and handcuff him. Suddenly, Suchin comes at the time and takes away the handcuffs. Ten minutes ago, Suchin sees Hyaseong unlocks the location of the Group D's basement. Meanwhile, both the girls are still knocked out. His thoughts he should go to the location to help Hyaseong. He opens the box and wears his special goggles. He feels incredible as he sees everything very clearly. This morning, he came to the lab and get his goggles. The lab assistant tells him the technician also added an extra function. These goggles have a hexagonal lattice and a dial which helps to enhance his compound vision. He presses the dial as he sees everything clear. He goes at full speed to help Hyaseong. When he reaches the base, he sees Hyaseong is injured. Chang Hun uses his complex of fire ants to knock him out. He sprays fire which can damage the eyes. But fortunately, Suchin wears the goggles that save him. He punches him and almost knocks him out. Suddenly Hana covers the cave from the outside to make it dark. He can't see anything but Chang Hun can as he is an ant. He thinks he should go into the air first but Yunji holds him. The fight starts between them. His goggles help him in a fight as he can see everything clearly in the darkness. He uses his power and came out of the cave. Such an defeat Chang Hun. He is eliminated. Hana and Hunji run to guard the flag but fail. Such an got it first. Tima wins the tournament. Professor says it's over. The tournament ends here. Suddenly, he realizes he left the Hyaseong alone in the cave. Meanwhile, in the cave, Hyaseong curses himself as he can't do anything for his group and also for himself. Professor Yu comes and do a checkup on him. She tells him he might have some effect for a while and congratulate him for winning. He gets surprised and a little bit jealous as he never expected that Suchin can beat three opponents by himself. Suchin comes to him and asks if he is okay. But Professor Jun says him to go back to the lecture hall now. Professor tells Hyaseong no matter how good he may be there's always someone better. He tells him the problem is that he didn't even try. He didn't understand this. Professor Jun tells him the class is over here. He should to campus, get some treatment, and pack his things for a trip. 
In the dormitory, all are enjoying the party. Hyona tells Suchin and Huijin that she can make clothes for them. After a few days, they all are at the Black Island in search of a pet shop laboratory. Suddenly, they see Hyonbin Ju, a teaching assistant. She comes here for their safety. In the hostel, she comes and took some clothes for them as these were gifts from Hyona. She tells them they have to change into provided costumes. At Black Island Beach, everyone is wearing swimsuits to look like tourists so nobody can doubt them. Huijin feels uncomfortable in the suit, but Doa tells her she is looking good. Suchin is surprised to see her. Hyasyeong is looking a little bit upset. Suchin asks Hyonbin, they are all not coming here to have fun. He replies that it's necessary for them to look normal and to have fun, so the pet shop employee can't find them suspicious. Now they all go to the beach and enjoy themselves. They start eating. Suchin notices that someone is stalking them with a telescope. They thought he could be the employee who petroled the island. The old man leaves after some time. They all rest at the hostel after lunch to begin the search tomorrow. He is so happy that he had fun at the beach. Doa comes to him and tells Hyunbin wants them all together to plan strategies. So he and Hyaseong come fast. He goes to the room and finds that Hyaseong is not in the room. Meanwhile, on the other hand, an old man is sitting at the bank of the beach. Hyaseong goes to him and asks him where the pet shop is. The old man thinks he is his grandson. A random man comes to him and tells him he lost his memory and finds every young boy his grandson. He took the old man to his home and starts cursing himself again. Suddenly Suchin finds something weird in the telescope and runs to find Hyaseong. Meanwhile, a boy is coming to the Black Island as Gayen calls him. Hyaseong is dreaming about his soccer career. He was betrayed there by his team members. He turned into an insect human and leave his passion. He feels he is not good anymore. Suchin tells Professor Jun that they don't want him on their team. Suddenly he opens his eyes and thanks God it's a dream. They continued their search and snooped around the various part of the island. But they didn't find a clue. One day in the evening, they all are sitting together. Doa is missing Hyaseong as he is not present there. Meanwhile, Hyaseong again sees the old man at the beach waiting for his grandson. He tells him to go home, as it's getting cold. He denies. He gets angry and starts scolding him. He consoles him and takes the old man o his home. He drops him and leaves. Suddenly he notices that the old man has a smartphone. But its battery is low. He put it on charging and saw something very weird in the phone. He is in shock. He thinks he needs to hurry and tell the others. But there is a monster outside the home waiting for him. They start fighting. Now he is sure that the pet shop is on this island. Meanwhile, Doa is waiting for Hyaseong at the beach, and suddenly, a stranger comes there. Professor Ju tells them, the pet shop is feeding an individual with the meat of another insect human. So these individuals have become monsters and have no humanity. He hopes they will never have to run into one of them. But if they find them, the best thing they can do is to run. Meanwhile, Hyaseong is fighting with the monster. He is so much strong that Hyaseong decided to run with the evidence. But he realizes the old man is all alone. He comes back to save the old man. On the other hand, Doa is also not in a hostel. Hyunbin is calling Hyaseong but he left his phone in the hostel. They both are missing. The fight is again started between Hyaseong and a monster. He tries his best but fails to defeat him as he got stung with poison, is blinded, and is now slashed up. The monster caught him. He again starts cursing himself but at this, he didn't want to lose it for himself as well as for his team. He uses his defense mechanism and defeats the monster. He caught him and turned into the evidence. He was happy that he played for his team at this time. Hyaseong cuts the claws of the monster, as he uses his defense mechanism which helps to grow the thorn on his legs into blades. As he is catted he evolves their body to survive in harsh conditions. That's why his complex has just transformed. Now he has acquired a new defense mechanism. He is stronger now and fights with full power. He almost going to kill him but suddenly, an old man comes and throws an acid bottle at the monster. He comes near to the monster. The monster put his claw on and goes to kill the old man. Instantly, Hyaseong comes to save him. Monster hit his claw on his shoulder. Monster takes him. He is getting fainted and thoughts that now everything is on Suchin. Meanwhile, on the other side, Hyunbin tells them that she has bad feelings as both Doa and Hyaseong are missing. She tells them they have to find them individually and contact her the moment they find either of them or if anything happens. Suchin is finding him for an hour. Suddenly he gets a smartphone. He read a note on the phone. In this note which written about the pet shop. Suddenly an old man comes and tells Suchin that saves the Hyaseong. He runs to Black Island Wharf. According to the note, the pet shop should be here. He noticed that it is underwater. He sends a message. It's the place where Doa's phone was last time on. Suddenly a boy comes. 
Suchin comes to the laboratory place but he found a boy there who is a member of the pet show. He reminds Hyunmin to tell him that if he encounters the enemy, he must escape without engaging. He does the same, but the boy is so quick he caught him. The boy tells him that the nest pests are impressive, like that scorpion girl he met earlier. Suchin asks him what he did with Doa. He jailed her in the laboratory. He stopped after hearing this. They both start the fight. On the other side, Hyaseong is in jail. There are so many other insect humans. One of them fixed his shoulder named Hyaseong Kang. They all are the victims of jungle juice. They all are caught by the monster. On the other side of the fence, all monsters are fed with insect human meat. Suddenly the fish house owner comes to take one human insect to feed the monsters. Hyaseong is in shock after seeing him. He took an old man to feed monsters. Hyaseong shouts at them all about why they didn't help him. He tells them they can beat them down as they all have insect abilities. They all are very weak and afraid so they can't fight with them. He also tells them they should at least try as there is one word for them which is the nest. He uses his complex and breaks the chain. On the other side, Suchin is faster after wearing his special goggles. Hyujin is searching for Doa when she meets a human insect comes a monster. She gets a message from Suchin that the wharf is the lab. Her phone lost service so she can't contact him. A fight starts between her and the monster. Suddenly Hyunbin comes and hallucinates the monster with her complex of smoke as she is a tobacco hawk moth. They both talk about Suchin's text. Suddenly there are so many monsters come. They are ready to fight with all of them. Meanwhile, Suchin and a boy are at the wharf and fighting with each other. The boys say to Suchin that all nest pests and monsters are equal as the nest pest wants Cinderella potion, and the monster want to be met. He gets angry and tells him no they are not the same and punch him with full form. He almost beat him and was in hurry to enter the laboratory to find Hyaseong and Doa. But suddenly he comes back with more power and uses his complex by growing pincers on his shoulder. He is a doodlebug. He starts burying the Suchin under the sand. He can't get out himself of it. He tells Suchin that Gay and Sin gives him this task. He steps toward the lab and opens the door. Tides are coming. He wants to get rid of the labs as Breeder also want this. Suchin starts drowning in the water. 30 minutes ago, Hyaseong is trying to break the fence but failed. Other insect humans are losing hope. Suddenly, Hyaseong Kang comes. He motivated himself by saying that he can again convert into a simple human being if he can come out from there. He unintentionally uses his power. After seeing this all other insect humans also think that they also have powers now they can escape from this place. They all are motivated. A monster comes but they all fight him and kill him in seconds. They all ran toward the door. Hyaseong sees from the window that all the monsters are drowned. He stops the boy but he already opens the door. Water comes into the room. They all get frightened as the lab is flooded by the tide. They all run towards the empty room and try to lock the door but fail. The water level is increasing. Everyone loses hope but suddenly the level of water is dropping. Water is going out from the hole. The pipe is connected to the drainage system. They all come there. Doa is there. Meanwhile, Suchin is out of the sand. Doa and Hyaseong are together. Suchin and the monster are fighting. He lost his special goggles and is now out of control as he gets special power. He gives tough times to the monster. Meanwhile, Doa and Hyaseong come out from the lab with other insect humans. Suddenly, Hyujin and Hyonbin come there. They are happy to see them and also shocked to see so many insect humans. Suddenly Suchin fall and everyone is so shocked. He is so injured and starts screaming. Monster again uses his sand trick but Hyonbin tells everyone to stay inside the cylinder of smoke. In this way, she can save everyone from the sandstorm. Suchin again runs behind the monster. Hyujin wants to stop him or help him but Hyonmin stops him to do so. She doesn't agree with her so Hyonmin hallucinates her. Meanwhile, Hyaseong finds Suchin goggles and wants to give them as he knows to cover the eyes of animals making them calm down. He escaped from the smoke with the help of another Hyaseong. He runs after him and gives him his goggles. Later Suchin thanked him because now he can see everything. Suchin is now back to normal but suddenly Monster comes and takes away Suchin. Hyaseong runs after them but can't catch them. Monster tells him that he should stay out of this if he knows what's good for him. He lost them. Monster takes Suchin to the other side of the island so no one will bother them. He tells him that they will kill and be killed by each other because that's the true law of the jungle. They both start the fight again. The monster again uses his sand trick to bury Suchin but Suchin flies over. Monster again caught him and drag him towards the earth. But suddenly, Hyaseong comes at the time. Meanwhile, Hyujin recovers consciousness and asks Hyunbin about Suchin. Instantly there are so many monsters again coming. 
Mao Hyunmin can't hallucinate them as her cigarettes are finished. So the last option is they all have to fight the monsters. On the other side, the monster was shocked that Hyas Young just run across the entire island to save Suchin. A fight between Suchin and Monster starts. Suchin almost defeats him. Meanwhile, on the other side, they all are fighting with the monsters. Hyunmin tells that just attacking doesn't save them because feed training reinforced their exoskeleton, but they can amputate them or break them apart even burn them. Hyujin gets training in combat techniques based on Jiu-Jitsu from Professor Jun Jai. She is using all her skill to kill the monsters. Insect humans are amazed to see her that she is so strong and remarkable. Doa is also using her ultimate defense mechanism to kill the monster. All the other insect humans are so shocked and remember that Hyaseong tell them all earlier about this. They all are motivated and start fighting. They kill the all monsters. Hyunmin tells now they should hurry and help Suchin as the day starts soon. They have to go as they can't risk the townspeople's life, so they all have to hide. Suchin and Hyaseong are coming with the Antlion to Black Island Wharf. At the beach, Hyaseong Kang meets his grandfather. He stops himself because the image shown in the binoculars isn't him. He is not his grandson anymore. He is just a monster. He becomes a stranger to his grandpa and tells him his grandson never comes back. The old man again starts seeing through binoculars. He says as his memories keep fading but whenever he looks through this, he can see his little grandson. He tells him that he knows that he is his grandson as he knows his voice and way of talking. They both start crying and hug each other. Nest protection agents come to the pet shop lab and start examining the lab. B2 agent tells that some monsters are drowned, but few are still alive, so they have to knock them out with a stinger. Suddenly, they found a secret vault that is already opened. There are so many dead bodies of monsters. At the wharf, the school sent a ferry large enough to transport all the insect humans. Most of them are taken into the care of Nest. Hyaseong Kang doesn't want to go with them as he wants to live his life with his grandpa. Hyaseong says goodbye to them and they all leave for the Nest. Pet shop safe house, the lab assistant comes to Breeder and tells that Antlion was captured. But the Breeder tells him that he fulfills his duty, and that's all fine. Getting the predators out of there and getting rid of the lab was an important task. And he did this. Hyunbin is briefing the events on Black Island in front of the professors. And the result of the mission is that they captured one pet shop member with 21 feed trained specimens from their lab. Professor Ma says that the purpose of the mission was to explore the island. She replies that their identities were exposed so they have to fight for themselves. She also tells that Hyaseong Cha played a crucial role in locating the lab. Professor Jun Jai is impressed. Professor Ma appreciates their efforts. Chang Hun comes to group and congratulates them for their success in the last mission. He wants to say sorry to them. Doa comes and said him that he should say sorry to Hyaseong and the girls for his brutality. Chang Hun takes Suchin and Hyaseong to the bar for a blind date. Chang Hun tells them they both thank him for this party not only the girls are hit but they are smart and the right one is the topper of Professor Yu's class named Bidden Lee. They all start drinking and eating. Suchin can't drink anymore and want to leave. Suddenly, Bidden acts like she is fainting. Chang Hun and the other two girls tell Suchin to drop her at home. Suddenly Huijin comes to the bar and starts questioning what happened there. Meanwhile, on the other side, Bidden tells him that if he wants to know the reason behind his complex he should come with her. She takes him to the laboratory. She put him down and take off his shirt for a DNA sample. Suddenly, Huijin comes to the lab. She tells Bidden that she knows everything. Bidden is taking Suchin's blood for DNA. She tells them that Professor Yu tells her to do so. She shows some affection towards Suchin. She got the DNA and went. After that Huijin and Suchin are going to the dorm. Suchin wants to talk to her but she didn't give him a positive response. He feels she is upset with him. He offers her a drink but she refused. She tells him she heading back to her room for some drinks with Doa. When they reach the room they see here is the whole class is partying. Suchin also joined them. Huijin wants to drink with him alone. Suddenly he comes near to her and they both start talking. Meanwhile, Professor Yu tells Professor Jun that the results of the test are positive. Hyunbin is right that Suchin is a walking bomb. He should be isolated as everyone's safety is at stake because he is also like Gay and Sin. Professor Jun stops her and requests her don't isolate him as he didn't want to be alone. He will take care of him as he is his professor. If he doesn't keep himself in control he will stop him. On the other side, Breeder takes Gay into the monster and tells her that he will help him to kill the professor as he is a big obstacle for them. He will share a nice scheme to kill the professor soon. Meanwhile, in the jungle, Professor Jun calls Suchin and tells him that the school classified him as a violent threat. Suchin is in shock. Suddenly Professor Jun hit him. He hit him until he dies. He runs away but Professor throws a rock made up of explosive chemicals to beat him again. 
He is so injured but he didn't attack back Professor. He didn't know why Professor is doing this with him. Professor tells him that Hyonbin tells him that he lost his control while fighting. He also tells him Gay and Sin also did the same five years ago, when she can't control her anger or rage, so she kills all her class fellows and became a monster. He tells him that he heard the same thing happen to Hyuichin, so it's necessary to kill you to save the life of everyone at the nest. Meanwhile, all the members of the faculty and the dean are seeing all this via video. Professor Jun attacks him to the brink of death. Suchin shouts that he is not a monster and never wants to be a monster. Suddenly, Hyonbin comes and hallucinates him. Professor Jun want to show all of them he is not like Gay and Sin. After some time, he opens his eyes in the hospital. Professor Yu heals all his wounds. She tells him Professor Jun all do this to protect him. That's why he fights with him to prove to the school that he is not a threat. Professor Jun tells Suchin you are the strongest species here. A few hours ago, Professor Jun tells the class, today's lecture is on strengthening their weaknesses. Each of them will receive individual challenges and they have one week to complete them. Complexes can clash in being compatible with each other. The professor analyzes everyone's weaknesses and strengthens and writes them in a book. They all have to strengthen their weaknesses. All the classes in the nest open trained field. Professor one by one calls the students, tells them their strengths and weakness too, and gives them challenges. Hyas Young lacks technical skills so he needs to cut all balls with the blades on his legs. Yunji Jiang has complex mole cricket and needs to strengthen her fingernails and pierce through a slab of concrete as she can't dig solid places. Don Jiang needs to build up stamina to attack with iron mace so she will swing a 220 LB wrecking ball. Everyone knows his strengths and weaknesses and Professor gives them challenges except Suchin. Suchin tells Huijin that the professor tells him to come to see him after class, and he will give him a challenge then. After this Suchin and Professor Jun are in the basement. He left him alone. Suddenly, the praying mantis comes for a fight with Suchin as he is his challenge. Professor Jun and his assistant is watching him through a window, and the challenge for Suchin is to defeat his natural enemy. Suchin remembers that he cut a praying mantis one arm. Professor Jun wants to defeat the praying mantis at its full capacity so the lab provided the prosthesis. They both start the fight. Suchin can't defeat him as he has a hard skeleton. Suddenly, he raises his hand and asks the professor for a break. He runs from there. He goes to his friends and class fellows and borrowed their special weapons as he wants to defeat the praying mantis. A powerful weapon is his strategy to kill him. After some time he comes back he uses Dawn's mace but fails to defeat it as he didn't know how to use it. Then he uses Hana Sion's tranquilizer gun but fails then he uses Huijin Park's Blackthorn Knuckles. Suchin again makes a strategy but fails, and that the first day of the assignment is done. Suchin is roaming around the market and thinking about how he can beat the praying mantis. Suddenly, he sees Bidden Lee in the shop. He remembers she makes his goggles. He goes to her and asks for a favor. The final day of the individual challenge comes. All the students are on the ground. Suddenly, Suchin comes and says the professor that he is ready for the challenge as he got everything that he needs. A few days ago, Suchin and Bidden are sitting together in a cafe. He asks for help as he wants to adjust the goggles to stop the motion sickness so he can complete the assignment. She tells him that's impossible because the lenses and the goggles enhance his vision and works from the same perspective as an actual dragonfly. She tells him why to fix the goggles when he can just overcome his motion sickness. In Nest Park, he comes with some stuff. Bidden tells him he feels sick because his brain is receiving mixed signals. That is why she will teach him how to achieve a balance between his physical senses. He starts flying in rotational motion but he changes his motion he fails he tries again and again until he gets success. He needs more practice for it. A few days later, the final day of individual challenges comes. Everyone is now in the basement to see Suchin and the praying mantis fighting. Professor Jun tells him that it's the last day if he can't beat his opponent, then he fails the midterm. Suchin has another box as it's a gift from Bidden. She gives him a pair of knuckle guard tactical gloves. A fight starts. He comes with more power and attacks him with full force. He uses his knuckle gloves to beat him. Everyone is looking surprised by his skills. Praying Mantis gets his time and he beats Suchin, now he can't move. Everyone is in tension. Suddenly, Hyonbin goes to help him out. But Professor Jun stops her. He says that the real challenge is just begun for Suchin. Praying Mantis is going to kill Suchin. He bites his hand as he wants to taste his meat. He starts beating him. He is going to eat him. Everyone is so shocked but Professor Jun is relaxed. Suddenly he starts transforming. He is looking horrible. He starts to hear static in his brain that is eat or be eaten. As Professor Jun told him earlier if he does not control his balance his complex will eat him. Suchin becomes violent and start beating the monster again. 
Professor Jun thinks he didn't make it. It looks like he winning but something is off. Hyunbin tells the professor that they must stop him now as his instinct has swallowed his sense of reason. He will eat the opponent and lose the opportunity to become a normal human being. But the professor tells her to hold for some time as he thinks he can overcome it. Suchin starts shouting. The monster forces him to eat his meat. But Hyunbin opens the door and runs to save Suchin. The flashback starts when he and Hyujin are sitting together and talking. She said to him that they will never leave each other even if one of them will become a normal human being. Let's always stay together. Suddenly Suchin shouts that he is not a monster and punches the praying mantis. Professor Jun tells him that he passed his challenge. Meanwhile, Breeder sends his predators to the nest. Back at the nest training ground, the individual challenge is continued. They all did pretty well. Some of them didn't make it but most of them passed it. Suchin is in the hospital for his treatment. So the midterm assignment is over. Huijin is going toward class and thinking that now she has free time. She can go with Suchin for Tidiokbaki. When she enters the room she sees he is tied. Hyona tells Huijin to be careful. He could go apes hit at any moment and kills us. Suddenly Professor Jun comes to class and tells the school has already deemed him safe. You all saw was just a side effect of jungle juice. This side effect occurs in individuals whose DNA is exceptionally compatible with insects like Suchin and Gay and Sin. As all organisms share a certain percentage of common DNA, mice show 90% DNA with humans. Professor tells everyone that Gay and Sin was the Ness student. She was his student. She was a brilliant and passionate student. He was quite fond of her. But other students made fun of her that she did flirting with the professor to get good grades. As she had complex mind control, she tried to avoid all but one day her complex raged out of control, and she took countless lives. But Suchin is not like her as he can control his rage. He tells the class he is the candidate for valedictorian. After class Suchin was thinking about Professor Jun, and suddenly a blast in the research building. Breeders' predators are now ready to prey. Hyunbin runs to Professor Jun's room. He is all okay but the boy who comes for enrollment is dead. Suddenly a second blast happens. An emergency is imposed all over the campus. All the students take shelter immediately at a safe location. Meanwhile, outside the nest building, Breeders' predators are standing. They enter the building as the explosions draw the nest focuses to the inner campus. They kill everyone who comes in their way. Professor Ma tells to assemble the guardians, the nest safety team. They sealed all exits. Huijin thinks that something happened as the guardians come. Suddenly a predator girl Mewa comes and took off the cap of Huijin. She uses her praying mantis complex and starts attacking and killing all the guardians. Meanwhile, Hyunbin takes Professor Jun outside the building. She is taking him to the hospital as he is old and in worse condition. Suddenly, an old predator comes and tells Professor Jun for a little chit-chat. Professor knows that he is the monster. He tells Hyunbin to stay out of it but she refuses. She stands in front of the monster. Meanwhile, Breeder is so happy that his predators are real monsters. On the other side, Miwa is killing everyone. She is going to kill Huijin, but Suchin comes on time. Hyunbin uses her complex to defeat the monster, but he already knows her complex and wears a mask so she can't hallucinate him. Hyunbin is curious about his complex. They start a fight, and suddenly, he shows his complex Colobopsis Saundersy. Anything he can touch his trooper and he can explode whenever he wants. She wants to stop him to keep the students out of harm. Meanwhile, Suchin and Miwa also start fighting. Everyone is there and in shock at how this girl is so calm after killing the people. He is going to attack her but Huijin stops him as she is different from others than a praying mantis. Huijin attacks her but she is so fast and defeats her. Her arms are like giant knives. Suchin attack her but she predicted his trajectory in going to hit him. Hyona saves Suchin by pulling him down with her silk threads. They all use their complexes and skill to kill her but fail as she is so damn powerful. Huijin gets injured but she heals herself soon. Suddenly Miwa stands as she is the different predator and is forced to survive in the hellish conditions. Miwa is targeting Huijin. She attacks her and cuts his neck. After some time Huijin is again up and attacks her. They both start fighting. She is again hitting Huijin but she recovers herself again and again. As earlier Professor Jun tells her about her complex. He tells her that Professor Yu has done a test on her and according to the results she has been infused with approximately 1000 cockroaches. It's rare, so she can use a portion of that power at any time. She would be able to survive an atomic explosion, she is that much strong. Meanwhile, they are still fighting. She didn't harm Huijin anymore as she recovers instantly. She tells her boss that she does now as she ran into a specimen with a rare complex. He instructs her that after enough of the diversion, she should go and join the old man. Sutton shouted she is shuddering. 
Hyujin tells him to run after her and that she will join him after she takes the injured agents to the hospital. Meanwhile, Doa and Hyeseong come. Another predator girl comes in their way. A fight starts between them. They both can flex. Hyeonmin tries to hallucinate the monster with her smoke but can't. He moves towards Professor Jun to kill him. Hyeonmin comes to know that he is here to kill Professor Jun. She again tries to stop him but fails. She uses her complex to kill him. She starts smoking with a special Nest Lab cigarette and starts evolving. But in past, Professor stops her to do so as smoking is prohibited in the college. And if she wants to smoke she can come to his office and smoke it. But she knows it's the right time to use it. The ultimate defense mechanism of the exploding ant starts. She sparkles fireworks and attacks the monster and injuring him. Meanwhile, Suchin lost the Miwa. Hyonbin is evolving she is the black devil. She starts attacking Ohim and almost going to kill him but suddenly Miwa comes and hit her. She is injured and can barely even move now. She tells the old monster that the boss tells him to help him. He tells him he will take care of Professor and she will kill the kids. But suddenly Suchin comes. The old monster and Miwa are talking about the Suchin that they have to capture him. Hyonbin tells him that they are behind the explosions. They planted explosives in the specimens from the Black Island. He gets angry and starts fighting with the monsters. Suchin comes to know that if he avoids touching his arm he can defeat him. Hyonbin stops Suchin from fighting with them as he can lose his control and becomes violent for everyone here. So should leave them and takes Professor Jun to the safest place as they want to kill him. He agrees and takes Professor Jun away from them. Miwa tells the old man that they have to hurry. The leader said more pests will come if they take too long. He says don't worry as plenty of Black Island specimens are left. He wants to explode but fails. Hyonbin smiles and says thanks for the tip. He is on the line with the guardians. As he earlier said during a fight, he planted explosives in the people. Professor's Ma's guardians were on standby throughout the campus. They remove all the bombs. She says the old monster doesn't underestimate the nest and now he can't kill anyone here. They run to kill Hyonbin, but suddenly Suchin comes with the pack of cigarettes. He gives them to Hyonbin and tells if he will out of control then she can hallucinate him. Doa and Hyeseong are fighting with the other monster lady, but they can't defeat her as she is wearing some sort of armor and is strongest than most steel. She is stronger than them. She is the armored ground cricket. Doa again tries to punch her but the monster lady uses her ultimate defense mechanism and spills her acidic blood on her. This blood causes short-term vision loss. She can't see anything for some time and it gives some time to the lady monster for the attack. She punches her again and again like a sandbag. Monster says to Doa that it's a shame that she is one of the breeder's pets because she is so weak. She almost feels sorry for Junhyung losing his position to defend her. Doa tells her that doesn't say anything to her. She starts teasing her by recalling her old bad memories and punching her with full power. Doa falls and can lift herself. She is going to make her pray but Hyaseong comes and kicks her. He tells Doa he will always help her. Doa gathers her all power and poisons the monster lady with her venom and she starts bleeding. Her venom is much stronger as she was given the different venoms of the other insects human to lift her strength. Doa is about to knock the monster lady with her venom as its venom is slowly spreading and Monster can fight back. Hyaseong joins her in a fight. Monster uses her defense mechanism and spills her acidic blood on Hyaseong but Doa takes her on. She again lost her vision for some time, but she didn't stop and attacked her but failed. The monster beats her. Meanwhile, on the other hand, Suchin is fighting with Miwa and the old monster. Her attacks are too fierce. Hyonbin is trying to hallucinate with her smoke. But Miwa uses her defense mechanism and blows all the smoke away. She caught Suchin from back and pull him away. She said him that their leader tell them if they can't capture him alive then they kill him. So for her is the best option to kill him as his meat is tasty. Hyonbin tells Suchin that she may not be able to hold them off because the side effect of the complex is unbearable. There is only one way to get rid of it. She tells Suchin to use his rage to kill them. If they didn't stop them they will kill everyone here. He agrees with it. Suddenly, Professor Jun comes and stops him to do so. He says to him that don't go dying on him because he had got him in his mind for his graduate program. Professor Jun tells Hyonbin and Suchin to take some rest. He will fight with them alone. Niwa attack first but the professor fights with her and throws her away. He breaks her mantis. Then he attacks the old monster and beat him. The old monster attaches his troopers to professor's body when he touches him during the fight. The troopers start growing. And when they blast it may kill the professor. Professor Jun tells them that they crossed a line they shouldn't have crossed and they don't deserve to live. He uses the ultimate defense mechanism of the bombardier beetle and torched all the troopers. He blazes the heat that they can't bear it. He beat them with a single blow. After this, black smoke comes from his arm. 
Hyunbin is in tension after seeing this and tells Suchin that is very dangerous for him. This gives him severe side effects and grows worse and worse. Suddenly she faints after saying this. Professor tells that she uses so many cigarettes and it's a side effect. Instantly both monsters come along and attack Professor Jun. Miwa injured the professor with her mantis. The old monster attached troopers with Miwa's body and then explodes. Suchin runs to help Professor but the old monster presses him under the rock. Huijin runs toward the doors as she has to do something. The guardian gives her a key and requests her to go to the dean's residence and tell him everything about the situation. The residence is in the mountains nearby. He tells her to go for the sake of the nest. Meanwhile, the old monster and Professor Jun talk about the complexes. The complexes are influenced by the brain if they reject their complexes. It triggers an overload reaction within the body. Professor Jun also thinks the same in the past which is why he didn't allow Gayen to use her complex and due to his weakness, she killed many students. They again start fighting. The old man tells Professor that he will die soon. Predators use his complex of growing stinger to kill Professor. He tells Suchin this is their last special lesson and that he will see the true power of the complex. Professor Jun uses his ultimate final defense mechanism to beat them. A nuclear blast happened. Everyone is seeing the light of the blast. The blast is amazing. Unfortunately, Miwa is alive as her partner takes all the heat. Her partner is injured. Suchin is impressed with Professor Jun. Professor gives the choice to Miwa that surrendering herself peacefully or dying. She talks with her leader that what she does now. The leader tells her she knows what happened to her if she didn't fight. She doesn't want to be alone. She starts fighting with the professor. Professor Jun came to know that she is a roach as her wounds healed. She has the same complex as Huijin. Is impossible to the roach with a mantis. Meanwhile, another predator girl enters the nest emergency room. Professor Yu wants to leave as she wants to help Professor Jun. Suddenly the monster girl comes and kills her. She takes her ID to enter the emergency room. On the other side, Professor is struggling in the fight with Miwa. He is going to use his defense mechanism but failed as she cut his hand. He thinks now Gayen will be satisfied. Miwa killed the Professor. She says to her leader that the mission is accomplished. Suchin curses himself as he thinks that he is the reason for the Professor's death. Professor always defends him and uses his complex to save him many times. He thinks that he is the reason that they defeat the Professor. Miwa is leaving but he stops her that it's not ending. He uses his complex and starts to fight with her. Meanwhile, the monster lady enters the laboratory where the robots are placed. Suddenly she sees a tab on the table with the DNA analysis report of Suchin. On the other side, Suchin is fighting with Miwa. She thinks that he is like the other feed train specimens at the lab, like the beast that's lost its senses. She tries to manipulate him and force him to eat the meat by snatching the girl from the nest. He comes with full power and attacks her and shouted that he is not a monster. Meanwhile, the monster girl sees the Suchin DNA reports. She comes to know that he is not a normal dragonfly. He is the Jumbo Dragonfly. On the other side, Miwa tells him he moves with the same beastly instinct as the feed train specimens. But his mind is in full control. Suchin uses his ultimate defense mechanism of Jumbo Dragonfly which is the hunter's force to kill Miwa. Suchin is fighting with Miwa. She is begging for her life from him. She is curious about how he can boost his power and speed. He evolves the rest of them in such a short time. She remembers that the leader tells her not to run out of energy. She can wield the powerful force of the cockroach through the origin because it's a borrowed complex and will strain her body. If she sustains great injuries causing her to heal herself continually, it will exhaust her life force and kill her in the end. She wants to end this as she is running out of time. She is trying to kill him but fails. He again uses his defense mechanism of a hunting rifle and almost kills her. It's taking longer for her to heal as she is running out of energy. He tells her that he can kill her right here and now for what she did to Professor Jun and others but he is not like them. He gives her the option can live if she surrenders but she denies it. She tells him she will never stop as she didn't want to go back as it's miserable. If she has only one choice, she will choose to die. She uses her defense mechanism. He hit her and says to her that she didn't leave any option for him. But suddenly the leader of these monsters comes and says to Suchin that he never imagined a specimen at Nest would possess such a rare complex. And he is the one who ordered them to kill Professor Jun. Suchin wants to kill the leader. He tries to catch him but the leader is as fast as he has impressive instantaneous velocity. The leader put down Miwa and appreciate her for her hunt. The breeder told him not to reveal his abilities but he can't go Suchin so easily. He gets angry for killing Professor and other people and now acts like it was nothing. He tried to beat him but fails as he is so fast. 
the leader disappears himself and suddenly attacks Suchin. He gets minor injuries. The darkest hours start and now the leader is stronger in the dark place. He, again and again, attacks Suchin as he can disappear. Suchin can't see his attack in the darkness that's why he can't counteract him. The leader stabs his sword in his chest. He gets injured. The leader tells him that the predators were able to maintain control of themselves after feed training. He is going to kill him but suddenly a power comes and throws the leader away. Huijin comes and is glad that he is okay. Suchin tells her that she should go as they are too dangerous. They kill Professor. An old man comes and asks him about Professor Jun. Huijin tells him that he is the dean of the nest. He is so shocked that the skinny old man is the dean. Breeder tells the leader first they have to kill Professor Jun as he is the main target. He warned them before they can take care of the professor, there will be others to watch out for. First, the graduate student is his assistant. She can be the greatest threat being the tobacco hawk. Second, the class presidents. As Gayen says the upperclassmen presidents have their league but they are not on the campus. And lastly, the head of the Nest University, the dean. Dean put his aim on the leader, but he saves as he is so fast. The dean is disappointed as he has grown a bit rusty. Meanwhile, leaders would relish fighting to the finish. He tells the dean if they continue it won't end well for either of their kind. He starts shouting, Predators, mission terminated. All units withdraw. The monster who is fighting with Doa and Hyaseong wants to kill them so she holds the piece of rock and wants to throw it at them but Junhyung comes and saves them. Suchin doesn't want him to go, but dean stops him. He says no good can come of going after them. Only meaningless slaughter can be had. After the incident, there are 34 casualties, 50 injured, and 15 facilities injured. They damaged the Cinderella manufacturing factory and left the nest with zero hope. On the other hand, Huijin is in rush and taking Professor Jun to the emergency room. Suchin also comes and they both pray for Professor. After some time doctor comes from the operating room. He tells Suchin and Huijin that Professor Jun is in a coma. His internal organs suffered significant damage. He may have had a chance if Professor Yu had treated him right away. But she is also injured. The predator neutralized her by identifying neurotoxins. The next day everyone is in the class. But class is temporarily suspended due to the incident. They all are talking about the incident and become sad. Meanwhile, Huijin is standing outside Professor Jun's room. She remembers how her professor helped her and took her to nest. Suddenly, Bidden comes there and asks her if her class fellows are in the classroom and what is she doing there. She tells her paying a visit to Professor Yu and wants to know about the complex that was used against her. She tells Huijin that she should prepare herself. Everyone is still in the class. Suddenly Hyunbin comes there. She announced that class will be resuming soon as Nest will bring in a visiting professor. And secondly, Junhyung is now their classmate as he neutralized all the detained specimens and put them back in their units. So the dean discharged him and granted a full rights as a Nest citizen. Suchin is so much sad and missing professor. Junhyung comes there and tells him that he can understand him and also tells him that he uncovered another pet shop safe house. If he wants to join him he can. Suchin tells Junhyung how he can trust him. He tells him that when he puts back the monster into the units, he found a red dragonfly who is caged there. He is calling him so he went to him. He tells him that the nest is under attack by predators. He also tells that Sokcho in Gangwon province is the place where breeder lives. Suchin is as shocked as the red dragonfly works for the breeder and now he wants to help them. It sounds like a trap. Junhyung tells him he also thinks the same. But he tells that he didn't work for the breeder and was never feed trained either. He met Gaeon and became her henchman. He is telling all of me because he didn't like the breeder as he is bossing everyone around. After everything he did for him, it's not like he's getting him out of here either. So he is seizing the opportunity to catch him off his guard. He also tells me that there is a spy within the faculty. Junhyung tells Suchin he is right, and he doesn't want to tell anybody about the plan. But suddenly, Doa and Hyaseong come there and they listen to everything. They also want to join it. They all are making plans in the cafe how they will come out of the university. Suddenly, the almost whole class is there and join them in the plan as Hyaseong told them earlier. Meanwhile, Huijin gets the detail of the plan on the call of Crazy Prep. They all are running outside the nest, but are caught by the nest protection guards called the Wasp Squad. They come up with two plans to go to Sokcho. In the first plan, Yunji would dig an underground tunnel to escape through. They all thought it was foolproof as they didn't know the security outside school grounds was even heavier. No one is one to be caught by the Wasp Squad. Suchin tells now they can't slip out unnoticed so they all have to move to Plan B and do it the way Chang Hun suggested. Meanwhile, Professor Ma is waiting for them and asks them why they did so. Huijin and Suchin tell him that it wasn't some act of rebellion. They are just trying to go on a field trip. 
Everyone is still shaken up from the attack so they want to give them a chance to relax. Plus they have this free time as their lectures are cancelled. They tell they sunk out since the school would not allow it. But they want to take a break. Professor Ma tells them they can't go outside in these circumstances. But suddenly Dean comes there and he allowed them to go on a trip. Professor Ma also allows on one condition that he will send a guard with them and she will be Ms. Moon, her assistant. Such and thanks to the Dean. The next day, they are all going on the trip and won't have to worry about the spy. But the problem is there they have a guard to watch them. All the students on the bus are talking about Ms. Moon as she is so much clever. They want to shake off her as Suchin has a plan. They reach the resort. It is so beautiful, looks like Ness shelled out some big money. The girls are looking happy to see the pool. They all are enjoying themselves. Chang Hun reminds them what they came here for so snap out of it. Ms. Moon comes and says it seems careless for her to reveal their insect forms out in the open like this so be mindful. Everyone starts thinking about dogging her so they all can go to sock show. Jun Hyung tries to prick her with his venom from behind so she can knock out until the next morning but fails. They all are taking that it's not going to be easy for them to distract her. But they will try. Now they tried to blind her with the tiny bit of Chang Hun's venom into the water gun but again failed. As she also uses the water guns. They kept going in various ways but every time fail in dogging her. They ever tried to neutralize or tie her up while sleeping but she stumped them every single time. Everyone thinks that the trip is over as she is so hard to crack. They all don't want to lose hope as they all want revenge for Professor Jun. Huijin comes up with one last idea. Meanwhile, Ms. Moon is thinking that they all are playing tricks and offering booze and maybe she should report to the school. Suddenly, Huijin comes and offers her champagne. She thinks they put some sleeping pills in it but let it go as she can tolerate any kind of venom or medication. She just touches her lips on the glass she gets hypnotized. In this state no matter what happens she won't remember anything. Group and Junhyung are ready to leave for Sokcho. Dawn and Hyona also join them. Chang Hun tells them they have to come back in the morning as the hypnosis will keep Ms. Moon asleep for a while. Suchin and Hyeseong are talking about how they are getting to Sokcho. Suddenly, Junhyung comes with the car. He got his license back when he was doing orphanage stuff for the breeder. Junhyung tells that they headed toward the place is personally handled by breeder, so they have no idea what to expect there. If things can go wrong they can die or be fed trained by them. But still, he thinks that they can handle them. Meanwhile, the lab assistant is on the call with the breeder. He tells him that everything on his side is okay. He tells us him that the old man is so injured but he is keeping him on painkillers it takes a toll on him when they start to fade. He also tells the breeder that they don't need the Cinderella thing after all so he gets rid of it. Suddenly, Suchin comes and put him down. The lab assistant calls security to kill them but Doa and Huijin fight with them and kill them. Doa tells there are some specimens in the basement. Suchin asks the lab assistant where the breeder and his predators are, but Huijin knocks him out. Chang Hun saves the Cinderella formula that they took from their labs. Hyas Yong gets so much Cinderella juice. Some alarms are going off. Meanwhile, Hyona and Dawn are waiting outside for group as suddenly the old man opens his eyes. He comes towards Hyona and Dawn and tells them to get down. There is another explosion and the ceiling is collapsed. Everyone starts running. Huijin tells that they should save the lack assistant as he knows the things about the breeder. Suchin holds the piece of rock and everyone left. Suddenly, the old monster comes to him and beat him. Meanwhile, outside Huijin asks that everyone is okay. She says to them that she will go back and get Suchin as he is still in there. Suddenly there are so many monsters coming outside. They are the feed train specimens. They all are thinking about how they get out. Suddenly, an old monster comes out and tells them he freed them. Doa came to know that he is the one who attacked the nest and tried to kill Professor Jun. She gets angry and attacks him but stops as one of the monsters is holding Suchin. The old monster tells him that now he gets his revenge as he is in pain since the day of the attack. He will kill all of Professor Jun's precious students. Huijin tells him that she would love to see him try. He wants to blow her apart now. He attacked Huijin and burst like a rotten egg. He thinks he killed her and said who wants to die next. Huijin again stands and tells him she wants. He again tried to kill her but fails as he didn't know that Huijin can heal herself. The old monster tries many times to kill her but fails. He came to know that she has a self-healing mechanism like Miwa. He puts his trooper on Huijin's body and explodes. Now he thinks that he killed her. Doa runs to kill him but he set the trooper on the ground too. He tells Doa that she is standing in a field of landmines and starts explosions. He tells them they can't do anything but scream. He teases them that they are all weak students of the weak professor. Suddenly, Huijin comes and grabs his arm as earlier Hyonbin tells her that he controls everything with his arm. Huijin calls the Hyaseong to cut his arm so they can beat him. 
The old monster kicked them and ordered all the monsters to kill them. He runs from there. Huijin tells the other fellows that they handle the monsters and that she will go behind him. The predator is running and shocked at how they did know about their complex. Huijin comes and hit him very hard. He tells Huijin she can't heal herself infinitely. He will be planting his troopers and killing her so victory is his. She takes Professor Jun's chainsaw and cuts his arm. He tells Huijin you think you beat me. He tells that those feed trainers are the specimens that are the feed of the real monster. Meanwhile, Doa is hearing the noise that something is coming towards them and she shouts to get out of there. Everyone is frightened that what's coming is the earth also shakes. There is the breeder's largest pet is come. Suchin is numb when he opens his eyes due to the earthquake. He sees there is a huge monster. Suchin recognizes it. It's breeder's voice. He is controlling his monster named Gigantia and sees everything on the laptop. He tells Suchin that he always want him in his group but now he realizes that they both are different and always against each other. He orders Gigantia to kill them. They all get scared as it's too late to escape now. They all give their best to defeat him but fail. Hyaseong tries to cut his body with his blades but fails as it's a minor cut for him. He is so giant that they can't even think of defeating him. Suchin flies high and fortunately monster can't get him. Then the monster moves down and tries to kill Hyona but she uses her defense mechanism to save herself. Huijin comes and tells Suchin that they keep him starving so he just wants to eat them all. So they have to stop here as the monster can go to the city. Suchin gets a plan. Suchin takes the Gigantia to the Logan Stone. He is taking him there. Meanwhile, Huijin announced that there is a massive landscape so everyone leaves the town and go to a safe place. Everything is working according to the plan. People start leaving the town. Meanwhile, the breeder sends his pet pill to the sock show. Suchin is trying hard to take the Gigantia to the Logan Stone. Huijin tells him that is very dangerous. He tells her that they need to think outside the box to beat him and they are doing the right thing. And Junhyung also tells him that there would be a centipede waiting with them. And they could ruin things for breeders by catching the centipede. That is why we come here to beat this monster. Suchin uses his complex and punches him with dull power. On the other hand, Hyaseong cut the rock and throws it at the monster and Doa uses her complex to defeat him. There is a massive landscape. And they did it. That was a devastating blow for Gigantia. Breeder knows that this situation can be fixed if Gigantia eats just a little meat. Suchin is taking Gigantia near the statue. He thinks he can beat him here. Suchin tells everyone should be ready. Let's do it. Hyona starts to tangle Gigantia in her silk thread. She makes the cat cradle Eiffel Tower. She tells Suchin that she can't hold it for a long time. Huijin takes out Professor Jun's chainsaw. She starts to cut him into pieces. Suchin calls the Doa and Hyaseong for their duty. But they are busy with the monster as the monsters cover them from all around. These monsters have been trained as weapons for combat. Monster gets up here to kill Suchin. Hyona and Huijin also fail to hold the monster. Breeder praises them for their efforts but that is not enough to do any damage to the Gigantia's outer shell. Gigantia hits Suchin but he stops him with full power. Breeders tell him that if he joins his forces then they will let him live. The monster is going to eat Suchin. He remembers that Professor Jun tells him that always show them that he is not a monster, but show them that he is human, the strongest kind of beast around. Hyona again starts to tangle the thread to capture the monster. In the end, he uses his ultimate defense mechanism of the Jumbo Dragonfly. Now he becomes like a hunting rifle. Breeder knows that he is not aiming for the Gigantia, but the head of the statue. And then a blast happens. Suchin almost killed the Gigantia, but he was again alive. Hyona and Huijin start to run because Gigantia is behind them. Suchin helps them but Huijin tells him that there is less power in the monster so she can hold it for a little bit more. She starts to cut down the monster with a chainsaw. Gigantia is going to kill her but on the time Ms. Moon comes and saves her and tells them that's why Professor Ma sends her with them. Suchin asks her how she comes here. She tells him that his fellows on the resort told her. And someone also called for backup to this location. Junhyung calls for backup. He comes when Doa and Hyaseong are struggling with the monster. He uses his ultimate defense mechanism of Tranula and throws his feathers. All these hairs have a lethal dose of venom. All monsters are killed in just one shot. Meanwhile, Suchin uses his all defense mechanisms one by one to defeat him. He attacked him with hair coursing then a hunting rifle, and then punch him with hunter force. Suchin knocked him out. Breeder is quite impressed with him as he kills his greatest pet. He killed the monster finally. 
Suddenly Pil comes and scratches his face. Pil feeds Suchin with the meat, so he can become a monster. Huijin comes near to him and says to him that he can vomit now as it doesn't late that much. Monster tells her that feeding is complete the moment he swallows. After some time he craves the meat and at that moment he becomes the monster. Suchin starts changing as his last ounce of humanity disappears. He just attacks Huijin but Hyona stops him. Ms. Moon wants to kill Suchin and tells Huijin that she should leave him as she doesn't want to lose his students. He's starting to lose control. He tries to hold it but fails. He throws Ms. Moon and just moves towards Hyona to kill her but Huijin comes and stops him. He bites Huijin. Doa and the other fellows are tense to see him like this. Junhyung tells if Suchin feeds then it's done for him and he will become one of the breeder's collections. Ms. Moon attacks Suchin and tells Huijin there is no hope for him now. She is going to kill him but again Huijin comes and takes the blow on herself. Let's find a way to be human again together. Breeder is looking happy that Suchin can't overcome it. He flies and now going toward the Doa, but suddenly there is a blast. He regained control even after feeding on prey. He overcomes the instinct to satisfy his cravings. The breeder is so shocked that he just feeds Suchin but instantly he's become able to distinguish the smell of prey. Breeder orders the pill to get herself out of there. But Junhyung comes and bites her. Breeder tells Suchin can't hold himself back forever. Suchin shouted he will be human again. He will be top of the class and get his hands on Cinderella. So just sit there and watch him. Huijin calls Suchin but he stops him to hold back as the smell is too much. Suddenly, the nest helicopters come. Wasp Squadron and Ant Squadron come with Professor Ma. They close the area from civil access. Professor tells Suchin that he was monitoring everything. It appears that he is truly fed and manages to control himself, and asks him as he is ready for what lies ahead. When you return to the nest, people will tease him so he should control himself. After this, he injects an injection named Pumpkin Carriage. This serum contains a small amount of Cinderella help to suppress an insect human's appetite and sense of smell. Now Suchin sees everything clearly and has no smell. They all are headed toward the nest. Multiple tests of Suchin were taken. Classes were back on. Suchin with his group is going toward the class. Suddenly, three students come in their way named Yu Hyang Hong, Yi Xiang Hyung, and Wu Gun Oh. They are the upperclassmen valedictorians. In the nest, there is a social club named Propolis. The group is run by the upperclassmen valedictorians. The Propolis wants Suchin would fight with them. Suchin is shocked that why would he do that? They tell him it doesn't matter what he wants if he didn't make any move, Wu Gun will make it. He comes near to Suchin but Doa stops him and tells them that they know that fighting on campus grounds is prohibited. Why are they ganging up on him for no reason? They all stop the Propolis. Yi Xiong tells them in Article 18 of the Nest Code of Conduct, members of Propolis may use their complexes to uphold order on campus, so don't get in their way. He beats Doa by sheer force alone. They tell Suchin if he didn't fight with them then they won't free his class fellows. They say to him and then show them that he is worthy. Suchin starts flying and thinks that he can catch him but suddenly he sees that Wu Gun is like a rolling ball and he can roll on the building too. He defeats the Suchin. They left his class fellows. Students start making fun of Suchin. Yi Xiong tells Huijin that he heard she would be a candidate for freshman valedictorian. In the club, Yi Xiong sees that the shell Wu Gun is injured. He knows it was done by Suchin. He tells his group that he made his decision and that he wants Suchin in their group. Breeder is taking bath in the pool and thinking about the last fight. Gaeyan comes and joins him. Breeder jailed the governor of Gangwon province named Wu Jin Kwan. He wants him to work as a spy for him. He again put his predators on the nest. They all want to kill the nest pests. Breeder reveals his pet shop and tells Gaeyan that Professor Jun is no human and she can kill him by herself. Meanwhile, Despite the best technologies and doctors out there but there is no indication of Professor Jun waking up. He is still in a coma. Everyone is enjoying the part as their summer vacation starts. Jun Hyung wants to show Doa the pictures of orphanage kids while Hye Seong gets a little bit jealous. Meanwhile, Huijin and Suchin are sitting together and drinking. Suchin tells her that sometimes he felt the effect of feed. She put her finger on his mouth and tells him when he wants to bite someone he can bite her. They both hugged each other. The vacation ends and the new semester starts. Suchin and Huijin both are top-ranking students and now they are members of Propolis.